This here is my Dell R730. It is currently my one and only home lab server. I decided that I didn't want my life to be easy and I didn't want good power efficiency. I decided I wanted to go full enterprise gear for no reason other than just because I can. So um, I picked this bad boy up on eBay for about 400 bucks, figured out a place to stick it, and now my girlfriend hates me. So originally the idea was I wanted to start a Jellyfin server. So if you don't know what Jellyfin is, it's similar to Plex if you don't know what Plex is. Um, it's basically a self-hosted uh, like Netflix server almost. It's not Netflix, but like you basically put your own media on it and then you can access it from uh, any devices in your homes. I personally, just for what I want and need, uh, Jellyfin's a little better. It's open source um, where Plex isn't. And then uh, you have to pay for like a subscription on Plex for like hardware transcoding. So, you know, as you'll be seeing here in a second, I am going to be taking advantage of. I really just kind of wanted to give a rundown of kind of this server and what you can get for enterprise gear. Um, and why you may or may not want to go with enterprise gear versus, you know, say a thin client or, you know, uh, SBC. But I think for, you know, price to performance, if energy is not a huge concern, this is really a great option. Um, so let's take a look. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and slide this uh, panel off. Just uh, literally just latch here. You latch it up and you pull it. Slides it back automatically and you just lift it. So they design these really for easy service and then panel's got some really cool diagrams just kind of showing you how everything works. Uh, that way you have something to reference, don't need to you know resort to opening the manual right away. Pretty easy. That's what's cool about home lab is um, you know about your home lab is you really can do whatever you'd like so I don't even need this. This is way more powerful even with its current configuration that I do of course plan on upgrading. Uh, is way more powerful than what I needed. You know, YOLO, why not? Um, because I can and because I want to. And I mean, you too, through the powers of eBay, can have one just like this. Well, similar, this one's mine, you can have this one. All right, so before we actually take a look inside, I just kind of want to show kind of a good layout of the um, IO as well as, you know, the buttons, the front panels, the sliding drive mechanism, stuff like that. So I think these are some of the best looking servers. Not that really, you know, the way a server looks is really important. It's more about, you know, it's performance and everything like that. But, you know, the looks do go into, um, you know, these look great, but even though they look cool, they don't, you know, suffer any from performance loss or anything like that as a result. So um, this is a eight bay, uh, three and a half inch form factor one. Um, you can get these in all kinds of different configs. They have two and a half inch configs. Uh, they have more drives, um, really just kind of whatever you need. And uh, so really it's pretty cool. So I have eight drives, uh, drive caddies. I only have six drives in it, but uh, you press the button, just pull your drive out and already this thing's been in my home for not super long, just a few weeks and already quite dusty. Don't have that nice clean filtered air like a data center would. A couple USB ports, a uh, data card, which I think is like a authentication card. So like if you're actually needing to log into the BIOS or something. You have that available, so you just, you know, smart card in. You don't have to enter a password or anything like that. Uh, not something I'm super familiar with because it doesn't fit my use case. Not entirely certain how that works either because I just don't have a rack to put it in. You'll see my uh, mounting solution here shortly. Okay, and now for the back side. This thing is oh, mega heavy. Not exactly known for there. Oh, lightweightness. I got two power supplies. Mine has dual 750 watts. You got four gigabit ethernet, uh, gigabit ethernet ports, two USBs. One actually is a USB three, another VGA display output, serial, and then you actually have an additional um, ethernet port. And this is for the actual um, iDRAC system, which is just the, you know, IPMI. Do have a video card in here, just, uh, Arc A750, and I'll uh, kind of get into the reasons why it has that and why I chose that card and not something different. That's interesting, I never realized it flicks so much. All right, here we are inside the server. So we have our modular fans, really cool. Just a little connector on the bottom. These are hot swappable. Not sure why you need to take the entire assembly out, but they do make it easy. 
These are your dual sockets. This is a LGA 2011, so not hugely, hugely uh, modern and also not hugely powerful. I mean, for the time, pretty good. So uh, in this system, it's got uh, two Xeon E5 2650 uh, version fours. I'm looking to upgrade those. Probably will actually be downgrading to a version three just because for the cost, you can actually get more powerful. Granted, not as efficient, but power where I live at is relatively inexpensive, so not something that I'm concerned about. Now, if you live in Europe, though, this would probably be out of the question and overkill. So you, of course, have my ARC A750 here that I've installed. Uh, this mess of red wires that are all heat shrunk and kind of everywhere are the power supply for it. So um, what's really cool about these servers is they do have power available to power a graphics card or any kind of, you know, any other uh, PCI card, PCIe cards you can put in here. Um, graphics card, of course, draws quite a bit of power for for the system. Um, but anyways, I had to actually make some custom some custom power cords. Dell does sell these, but uh, not only am I impatient, but I'm also a cheap ass. So um, I decided to make my own, which was quite an endeavor. Took uh, way longer than it should have. The reason why you buy something like this over pretty much anything else is just due to how much expandability you have. So um, granted it is, you know, in a server configuration and some of these parts are, you know, only Dell branded and stuff like you can't just throw any fan in it, you know. This is only going to be a Dell part. Granted there may be, you know, generic versions out there, but I don't know why you buy one. You can get these pretty cheap anyways, all, you know, used stuff taken out of data centers. It's usually pretty good stuff like this one. I got it for cheap and everything was perfect. It was perfectly clean inside. Like this is only dirty because I've been running in my home. Um, but you know, you can install plenty of expansion cards and even something like, so this right here is the NIC um, and it's got, you know, its own proprietary connector and everything. So you're not going to just throw any kind of NIC in it. I mean, you could of course into any of these PCI uh, slots because it's a power edge. There's several different configurations. So you can get some with um, really whatever you want. It's available just because they sold so many of these. You know, the configurations are really quite good and the cost is uh, really great as well just because it's all decommissioned server stuff so you know when the data centers start to need more powerful stuff or more efficient stuff you know they get rid of these at pretty good price so they sell this stuff off for cheap i've even heard of some people on like the home lab community and stuff who get this stuff for free from you know their place of employment stuff like that if they work you know if they actually work in data centers or you know for a company that has uh, servers on site stuff like that so yeah, there's a few ways to acquire these. What I use my server here for is uh, kind of just everything that my home lab requires. I guess none of it is required, but what my home lab does. So um, I have a Jellyfin server. Uh, I do do hardware transcoding, so that's what this arc is for. So, you know, this is actually one of the, uh, this is really overkill. I think I could have even gotten away with like an A380 or something, but uh, this thing was not super expensive either. But uh, this is good for hardware transcoding. So, you know, all of the different formats, uh, this will this will handle it pretty much uh, effortlessly. So, um, wasn't super bad to integrate. Now, granted, I am running Proxmox on this. So, you know, getting that pass through into the, into the container and everything, not the most fun always, but it is possible. Here's a little pictogram information thing. If you were curious, wanted to take a look at that. Installation is, uh, of course, the reverse order. Super simple, just put on, even has a lock. So I'm sure some of you guys are curious of what this thing sounds like. When you power it up, of course, if you're going to put it in your home, uh, power usage is, of course, something a lot of people think about. But there's also, how freaking loud is this thing? Um, it's not as loud as you would think it is. It's still um, louder than you would want to have in, say, your living room. Uh, definitely not a bedroom. Unless you're one of those people that sleeps with, like, the fan on. But even then, it's a different kind of noise. It's a little, little, um, shall we say, annoying. Now, this is, of course, going to be better than, say, like, a 1U or something because... When you have these really tiny, you know, a one U is half the size of this. I mean, I think you can actually get the one U's a little bit cheaper than these because they're not as, uh, can't put as much into them, you know, as say as like drives. Not only that, but like, um, you know, graphics card fitting, fitting that GPU into a, uh, into a one U is, would probably be pretty difficult if not possible. I mean, it fits fairly nicely in this thing, but, but yeah, like I said, don't get a one U. They're loud. This is already loud. Don't get a one U. They're louder. All right, and so if you do ever um, decide to put one of these monsters in your home for some reason, uh, 
if you have problems like I do and uh, have money that uh, you obviously don't need to spend but are going to anyways, um, probably want to know what it sounds like. Or you probably just don't care, like me, and you're just going to yellow it anyways and figure out. See, I'll just buy it and figure out the solution later, and then it's usually fine. But uh, here is... I got one power supply plugged in. You can run this on just one, of course, um, so it's redundant, but um, you know, two is better, so two it is. But uh, already, even with just the one power supply plugged in, you can hear just a little bit of noise. I have a, have a mic on, so um, it does. I'll go ahead and turn it on and let you guys uh, hear what she sounds like. So it's uh, pretty loud on first start. All right, I mean, we've settled down to kind of an idle state. Pretty quiet. Not, uh, not loud at all. The uh, only thing about it is, like, the noise isn't terrible. It's just, it's kind of rattly sounding like. Um, I don't know, there's just some high-pitched noise that just makes me want to throw it off a cliff sometimes. Not sure how well you can tell, but that's telling you the current power rating, this thing at idle. I do have some of the settings changed just to kind of be a little bit more efficient, but uh, with uh, force, four uh, three and a half inch drives, two SSDs, a uh, ARC A750, and uh, dual sockets, 126 watts at idle. Pretty high compared to, you know, an SBC or, you know, maybe just a regular desktop, but uh, for this caliber of a machine, pretty good in my opinion. Let's get another good look at the I.O. here. So of course, we have our button to locate it. Blink. It'll blink on the front too. Just let that go back, just to stop it. We got our iDRAC, which is uh, for management. Of course, serial, VGA, USB, USB 3.0, I believe. It says super speed, so. Uh, and then our four, Gigabit Ethernet, and of course you can switch that card out for uh, quite a bit of different options. Got a ton of uh, PCI slots, so these are half slots, full length, full length, um, and then we have hard build power supplies. See, like I said, I can unplug one and the system still powers on. I can unplug this one and the power. Still nothing happens, still running happy. So, pretty, pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. You don't get that on uh, your old PC that you've turned into a home lab server, but hey, if that's your jam, that's your jam, and if that's what you got, don't let it stop you. All right, I did allude to the fact that I don't exactly have a rack to put this in or anything like that, so um, it lives in my closet, and uh, yeah, along with, uh, all of my other networking stuff, so got the modem there, power strip there. I don't have a whole server room or anything like that that some of you fucking nerds might have. Just kidding. But, uh, anyways, this is the lowly little setup. This is where it lives. So, uh, pretty quiet when it's in the closet. I do. Before you start screaming at me that I'm holding this server hostage and not giving it any fresh air or feeding it daylight. I do keep the door open so it can breathe fresh air. That's all I do. It doesn't deserve anything more than that. It's a bad, bad server. So before you guys get on here and say I'm mean to this poor server that starving children in Africa could soon eat this server, just know I take good care of it. All right? All right. And so I'll give you guys a quick look at the IPMI. So um, it's called iDRAC for this Dell here. Really the main benefit to going with server hardware like this as opposed to, you know, just building a regular system or repurposing an old system um, or even going with like some of the SPCs, you get the iDRAC with this. Of course, you do have the, you know, all the enterprise server hardware, all that good stuff. And of course, you do have the increased cost of running it with the higher power draw and everything like that. And of course, the space and the noise. But the really big benefit to going with... Um, real server hardware like this is the iDRAC, you know, the built-in IPMI, all that good stuff. So you can see lots of good stuff in here, like the 
uh, temperature of everything, power conf you know the power configuration, the power draw, all that stuff. Power monitoring. Give you a rundown. It even tracks how much energy usage. So, you know, since I've had this thing purchased in the beginning of June, it's almost uh, August. You can see how much power I've used. You can do the math on that. Like I said, if you're living somewhere with a lot of expensive power, probably not a great option for you. Um, and then I just want to showcase one of the really, really cool features. So that's going to be the uh, the virtual console. So um, you don't need any special software or anything crazy, and it's not hard to get to. So literally, you open up this web page. You can set that all up on the machine really quick and easy. Um, you know, literally, you're just setting up the IP, you know, DHCP, whatever. Then you come in here, log in. Make sure you have Java installed, of course. Select run and continue about a million times, and then you're in the console. So, so here I have this machine is running Proxmox. So, um, and I don't have to SSH into it or anything like that. So, you know, not that SSH, not that SSHing into the system is hard or anything. But hey, if you don't have to do it, you don't have to do it.